the internal audit charter. So we've been covering how internal audit should be independent, what internal audit should do in its reporting lines. The internal audit charter is the document which puts that into effect, at least puts that onto paper. It's a policy from the board of directors and so should have their full authority behind it. What goes on an internal audit charter? So first of all, an internal audit charter establishes internal audits independence. So in the IAA template that's right at the top under organizational independence, so uh, internal audit is an independent and objective uh, assurance and consulting function, reporting directly to the audit committee uh, and board, uh, etc. So the audit charter establishes internal audits position, its reporting lines, and its accountability. So reporting lines, we just checked through those, its position in the organization, and who it is accountable to, and what it is accountable for. So it also shows you know, the obligations that it has to, to actually perform. It, it shows the scope. Now I'd like to stop here because um, there could be organizations where internal audit does not have full scope over the entire organization. I've also heard of the cases of uh, separate charters, but this gets complicated, for separate entities. In fact, uh, I had to create a, uh, a separate internal audit charter for a regulated financial institution, well, which was actually part of a larger group. So you'd have a, I had a separate internal audit charter just for that regulated entity. So I had a separate one, and the scope of that was simply you know, the regulated entity, uh, whereas there was one above it, which was you know, a bit more general, didn't have uh, necessarily all those you know, regulatory requirements in the internal audit charter, uh, and, and whose scope was much larger. There can be elements excluded from the scope, for example. The mission, which of course uh, you know uh, perfectly uh, by heart, it's not necessarily the mission detailed by the Institute of Internal Auditors, which, I mean, you fully know it by heart now, but which is to enhance and protect organizational value by providing risk-based and objective assurance, advice, and insight. The Chief Audit Executive and Internal Auditor Responsibility, so that's the different obligations to, say, you know, report on a yearly basis, to provide audit reports, to have proper audit working papers to gather evidence, etc. Unfettered access rights. So you might not know the word unfettered. It's not used in a daily, on a daily basis. But unfettered doesn't necessarily mean restricted. It means which is not in, in any way blocked or interfered with. Say you want to go see the branch in Spain, but you know, you're, you're told that you can't see it yet, but you can see it in six months. I mean, your access right is obviously not exactly unfettered. And, and worse, this is directly about the communication from the chief audit executive to the audit committee. This should be completely unfettered, not blocked in any single way. A right to contact and other rights. So that's uh, kind of touched on as well. And that's it for the internal audit charter, but here we have the standards. And we're going to look at the standard 1000. And I've reworded them a bit, but here is what standard 1000 says about the internal audit charter. And since it's 1000, a nice round number, you know it's important. It gives that the purpose, authority, and responsibility of internal audit must be defined in a charter for either assurance or consulting activities. You do not have the option of not having an internal audit charter. If there is no internal audit charter, that should be your work for you know, today. The mandatory nature of the core principles, definition of internal audit, code of ethics, and standards must be recognized in the standards. Now, this is, this needs to be defined properly, okay? Because here we're talking about an organization which is following, which is aiming to conform with 
the standards from the Institute of Internal Auditors. It is aiming to, con to conform with, and so to be able to conform with, or aim to conform with, it will put in its charter a paragraph saying this internal audit department recognizes the standards from the Institute of Internal Auditors. It recognizes these standards and it will follow the core principles definition of internal audit code of ethics and standards. I say it's mandatory but it's mandatory for an organization which is actually following or aiming to conform with IIA standards. You can, for instance, for large organizations, I've, I've seen this in a large uh, international American bank, for example, that they had their own standards. They, they had their own principles. They, they actually had a, a guide on internal audit, which was you know, 200 pages long, which all internal auditors needed to know uh, pretty soon after arrival. And they would not, in that case, put that the IA standards were mandatory, they would put that their own internal audit, you know, guidebook or whatever they called it, uh, what was mandatory to follow. The CAE must periodically review the charter and present it to senior management and the board for approval. So notice the word periodically. What you should do as head of internal audit today is check in your internal audit charter the date of the last review. And even if there haven't been any changes in 10 years, you should at least say that you've reviewed it periodically. And you should present those to senior management and the board to see if they have any requests for changes. You can't just have a internal audit charter languishing in a drawer. It has to come out periodically, and I'd say that's at least annually. What I do is an annual reapproval of the uh, internal audit charter.